The following lecture is about pharmacogenomics and the pharmacogenomics knowledge base, short PharmJKB. The presentation is divided in an overview section, the discussion of pharmacogenetics examples, an introduction into PharmJKB, and some points about clinical relevance of pharmacogenomics testing. Starting with the overview. Drug response varies in patients. In a certain patient population with the same diagnosis and treatment, some subjects will respond well to the administered drug, some have a poor response, or even experience adverse drug events. What are the factors that influence drug response? They are clinical factors with the influence of age, gender, and weight. Secondly, diet and environment. And third, genetic factors. Pharmacogenetic research investigates the association of genetic variation and drug efficacy. For example, responds well to cholesterol medication or the association to adverse drug reaction, for example, develops hepatotoxicity. Looking at an administered drugs, there are two pharmacological key concepts. Pharmacokinetics describes what the body does to the drug, including absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of the drug. Pharmacodynamics describes what the drug does to the body, including the mechanism of drug action, drug response, and adverse drug reactions or side effects. Genetic variations in genes coding for drug metabolizing enzymes like cytochrome P450 enzymes, transporters, and drug targets such as receptors, ion channels, kinases, can cause variability in drug response and toxicity. My next slides focus on the cytochrome P450 enzymes. 17 different SIP families exist in human. From those, the SIP family 1, 2, and 3 are metabolizing nearly all of the clinically used drugs, especially CYP2C9, CYP2D6, and CYP2C19 are highly polymorphic and affecting drug response and adverse events. Variations like gene deletions or range mutations can lead to the loss of enzyme function. Other SNPs might modify the protein structure slightly and cause a reduced enzyme activity. Gene duplications or polymorphism in promoter region of a gene can lead to an increased enzyme activity. The shown table illustrates how metabolizer phenotypes are predicted based on the gene alleles, in this case for CYP26. Carrying a wild type gene with no variations, both alleles are shown in green, will result in normal enzyme function, and subjects are called extensive metabolizers. Is one allele carrying a polymorphism? symbolized in red, the enzyme activity might be reduced and the subjects are grouped as intermediate metabolizers. Having two variant alleles, both alleles are shown in red, will cause a greatly reduced enzyme function and subjects are classified as poor metabolizers. Lastly, gene duplications increase enzyme function causing an ultra-rapid metabolizer phenotype. Instead of trying a sequence of different drugs to minimize adverse drug reactions and assure drug efficacy, the benefit of pharmacogenetic testing lies in the selection of the right drug at the right dose to accomplish the same. In the next part, three pharmacogenomics examples are discussed. Codeine is a commonly used pain relief drug. In the pathway diagram, the metabolism of codeine is illustrated. 
Codeine needs to be metabolized into morphine to be active. The diagram is available in an interactive format at PharmJKB, leading you to gene and drug information. CYP2D6 is the major enzyme transforming codeine into morphine. In individuals with a non-functioning CYP2D6 protein caused by gene deletions or frame shifts, codeine is not effective at standard dose, resulting in a reduced efficacy. In individuals with multiple copies of CYP2D6, codeine might be metabolized too fast, leading to morphine intoxication. How to use this information clinically? The shown table is from the codeine dosing guideline, written by the Clinical Pharmacogenetics Implementation Consortium, short CPIC, of which PharmJKV is part of. Left you see the metabolizer phenotypes, and on the right hand side, clinical recommendations. For the ultra-rapid metabolizer phenotype, the recommendation is to avoid codeine due to toxicity. For poor metabolizers, it is also recommended to avoid codeine due to lack of efficacy. For both phenotypes, the recommendation is to consider an alternative drug. Highlighted in the red box, you see the variants or also called star alleles, which are causing the phenotype. If you want to know what are the specific variants, you can find this table in the codeine dosing guideline supplements, showing for a given allele the nucleotide variation, the dbSNP identifier, and the effect on the protein function. To find this information, you can also go to the cytochrome P450 allele nomenclature database, which defines the star alleles or haplotypes. PharmJKB has a downloadable haplotype table capturing this information as well. The second example is about the metabolism of clopidogrel. Here you see the genes and intermediates involved in the pathway. Clopidogrel is a prodrug and used to prevent platelet aggregation in patients with acute coronary syndrome. CYP2C19 has a major involvement in the clopidogrel metabolism. Individuals homozygous for loss of function variants, mainly STAR2, in the CYP2C19 gene show no enzyme activity and are grouped as poor metabolizers. Clopidogrel is less effective in this subset of patients, leading to increased risk for serious adverse cardiovascular events. Individuals carrying the STAR17 polymorphism in the promoter region of the CYP2C19 gene might have an increase in enzyme activity. These patients are classified as ultra-rapid metabolizers. An increase in enzyme function and therefore in clopidogrel metabolism might lead to increased bleeding risk. Using the CPIC dosing guideline for clopidogrel, you see that for intermediate and poor metabolizer patients with acute coronary syndrome and PCI, a different antiplatelet drug is recommended. The bleeding risk is not actionable but referred to at the bottom of the table. To find out the variants defining the star alleles for CYP2C19, the clopidogrel dosing guideline supplements include this table connecting the star alleles with nucleotide variation, the dbSNP identifier, and the effect on the protein function. The dosing guideline only reported on the STAR2 variant since this is the most frequent loss of function allele, but other loss of function alleles exist and are highlighted in the red box. PharmGKB haplotype table and the SIP allele nomenclature database are other resources. Based on those two examples, I would like to summarize the effect 
that genetic variations in SIP genes might have on drug response. The first scenario, the activation of a poor drug through SIP metabolism, we discussed in detail in the two previous examples. We will observe that poor metabolizers might experience a lack of efficacy, while ultra-rapid metabolizers might be at risk of adverse drug reactions. In the second scenario, the drug is metabolized by CYP26 to an inactive intermediate, as it is the case for some antidepressants. Here you find accumulation of the active drug in the poor metabolizer, which can lead to an increased risk of adverse drug events, and the lack of efficacy in the ultra rapid metabolizer phenotype, since the component is too fast inactivated to reach therapeutic steady state concentrations. Also worth to mention are drug drug interactions based on the inhibitory effects some drugs can have on the cytochrome P450 enzymes. Taking a CYP2D6 substrate and a CYP2D6 inhibitor can alter the phenotype appearance of a person. Genotypic extensive metabolizer can appear phenotypic intermediate metabolizer or poor metabolizer. Some drugs are substrate and inhibitor at the same time, like fluoxetine and inhibit their own metabolism over time as the drug approaches steady state concentration. The third example describes genetic variations in pharmacodynamic genes which affect drug response. As shown in the pathway, the activation of the epidermal growth factor receptor, short EGF receptor, induces a downstream gene cascade which includes genes that are implicated in tumor progression. EGF receptor targeted therapies block the activation of the signaling pathway. Patients with activating KRAS mutations bypass the need for an active EGF receptor and therefore making EGF receptor targeted therapies ineffective. Testing for activating mutations in KRAS is mandatory prior prescribing drugs such as cetuximab. This table summarizes effects on other cancer drugs. Genetic variants in different genes can influence either the risk of drug toxicity or, in other cases, drug efficacy. PharmGKB provides a table summarizing well-known pharmacogenetic pairs. You can get this table through a link on the lower left part of our homepage. Which brings me to the next part of my talk, an introduction into PharmGKB. PharmGKB is a comprehensive resource for pharmacogenomics with the goal to promote understanding of the impact that genetic variations have on drug response and adverse drug reactions. We are at Stanford University and NIH funded. Most information is accessible right away and everybody who registers and gets a FAMGKB account receives access to our variant and clinical annotation data. This slide shows you a screenshot of our homepage. On top, you find general search boxes. Under the About Us tab, you find an overview about FarmGKB's content and policies, as well as about the FarmGKB team. The rotating box highlights important information and news. Underneath this box, you find links to clinical and research relevant content. On the bottom of the page, you have the possibility to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Entering a term in the search box below pharmacogenetic research links will return a list of variants, haplotypes, genes, drugs, pathways, 
associated with the ended term, in this case Clopedicryl. Clicking on the legend link will describe the icons used on the left hand side of the list. Entering a term in the search box below clinical relevant PGX links will give you a list of clinical relevant information. In this case, I entered the search term clopidogrel. Click on the clopidogrel dosing guideline, which will direct you to the clopidogrel drug page. Under the clinical tab, you have several subtabs. The first subtab is the dosing guideline tab. On this page, you see excerpts from published dosing guidelines. This is the table I showed you earlier from the CPIC Clopidogrel dosing guideline. If you click on the drug label subtab, you will see an excerpt from the drug label with a link to the drug label PDF with highlighted pharmacogenomics information. We have this available for most of the drugs listed on the FDA pharmacogenomics biomarker table. Under the clinical annotations subtab, you will find clinical annotations, which are high level summaries of our individual variant annotations where the curator assigns a level of evidence based on the quality of the individual publication. Clicking on an individual RSID, in this case for the CYP2C19 STAR2 variant, will display a summary for each possible genotype. Under the Research tab, variant annotations are listed by article. Here we capture the associated allele, study size, race, p-values and PubMed IDs. The Overview tab has structure and general information about the drug. The Pathway tab lists available drug-associated pathways. PharmGKB's drug-centered pathways are designed to illustrate drug metabolism, mechanisms of action and toxicity with selected candidate genes. The pathways are interactive. We also publish our pathway summaries peer-reviewed in the journal Pharmacogenetics and Genomics. In the last part of my presentation, I would like to focus on the clinical relevance of pharmacogenomic testing. To re-summarize, the objectives of pharmacogenomics are the identification of variation in drug response, the association of this finding with a genetic variation, followed by the evaluation of the clinical significance and to find screening tests to individualize drug therapy. What are the challenges of the implementation of pharmacogenomics findings? Besides the well-known examples, the literature for many gene drug associations is controversy. Even if the association is significant, the clinical outcome of this association might not be significant, or maybe the translation into practice needs to be proven cost-effective. Ethical issues with storing genotype data and straightforward guidance for clinicians to implement the knowledge, for instance in medical records, are only at the beginning. PharmGKB is involved in several knowledge implementation and research activities, for example, the Knowledge Standard Consortia. The Clinical Pharmacogenomics Implementation Consortium is a Knowledge Standard Consortium, with the goal to create, curate, review and update written summaries and recommendations for implementing specific pharmacogenomic tests. The specific guidelines are authored by several recognized experts in the given field using well-defined evidence criteria and evaluation. Earlier, I showed excerpts from the codeine and clopidogrel dosing guideline. 
Further guidelines are published for, for warfarin, abacavir, and thiopirins. And additional guidelines are in process. The CBIC guidelines as well as other published genotype guided dosing recommendations are available on FarmJKB. You can access this table through the PJX drug dosing guideline link on our homepage. Summarizing my talk. The field of pharmacogenomics studies how genetic variation impacts drug efficacy and side effects. Genetic variation can occur in both pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic genes. Non-genetic factors such as environment and lifestyle are important too. FarmGKB provides annotated information about human genetic variation and drug response phenotypes and is involved in efforts to clinically implement that knowledge with the long-term goal of genome-informed drug dosing that increases efficacy and decreases side effects. This slide provides you with additional resources for genes and variants, but also drug information. I would like to thank all the members of the FarmGKB team and you for your attention. We value feedback or for questions and suggestions, email feedback at farmjkb.org.